Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got banished and became the last Uzumaki. Part 1. Huge shout out to Jaegermeister31. For this story. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. Naruto and Sasuke have just finished their epic battle with Sasuke coming out the winner, only because Naruto didn't want to kill him. Of course, Sasuke had no problems with killing Naruto and shoved Ichidori through Naruto's chest, barely missing his heart. Sasuke looks down at Naruto, whose badly beaten and bloodied body is barely moving and hisses, don't come after me again, and next time I will kill you, Sasuke then runs off. A short while later Kakashi arrives. He first sees the devastation of the surrounding area, next, he sees Naruto unconscious and the water face down. He quickly rushes over and pulls him up, as he does so he checks unconscious boy for breathing and a pulse. He feels a faint beat in the wounded boy's neck, but it's weak and faint, as is the shallow and slow rise and fall of his chest. He then sees the hole in Naruto's chest, Sasuke had used the Chidori, an A-rank technique whose only reason for being is to kill, on Naruto. Kakashi quickly picks up Naruto and carries him back to Konoha as fast as he dare go. He constantly checks Naruto's condition, his ability to heal was working, but it seemed that it was somehow impaired. Kakashi realizes that the boy could still die so he picks up the pace. He arrives back in Konoha and rushes to the hospital, only stopping to ask one of the guards to inform the Hokage. Tsunade quickly enters the hospital and sees Kakashi holding Naruto. She tells Kakashi to follow her and leads him to a room where she starts working on Naruto. A short time later she's joined by a worried Shizune. After several hours Shizune leaves the room. She sees Kakashi outside in the hallway with the rest of the Konoha 11 there as well. The ones that are okay to move that is. Choji, Li and Niji are still in the hospital too injured to move. Kakashi looks up at the Hokage's assistant, Shizune how is he? Shizune smiles tiredly at the one-eyed Jonin, it was touch and go nearly the whole time we were working on him. Sasuke's move, the Chidori as you called it, barely missed his heart, but he'll be fine after a lot of rest. Sakura then speaks up without thinking or considering the circumstances and steading, what of Sasuke-kun? Pretty much everyone glares at her for that comment. Kakashi finally speaks though his voice was tight and barely restrained, there was too much destruction in the area where he and Naruto fought. There also was no sight of Sasuke anywhere, but Sakura, with Naruto this badly hurt I'd say Sasuke left on his own free will. Sakura then speaks somewhat in denial, so they tried to kill each other. I asked Naruto to bring Sasuke-kun back to me not try to kill him. Everyone looks at her in surprise, some with disgust, Shikamaru, Kiba, Hinata, showing in their eyes, and she's startled somewhat by their anger, what? He tried to kill Sasuke-kun. Kiba scoffs, no doubt Naruto tried reasoning with that bastard and he wouldn't listen, and what did it get him? Echidori to the chest that's what? Shikamaru nods in agreement, Naruto, he only probably stopped because he promised you he'd bring Sasuke back. Knowing him, he probably held back his power, wanting to bring that traitor back alive. Man, this mission was such a farce. For years Sasuke's made his intentions known to anyone that listened, he wants nothing but power and betrayed the leaf to do it. He's nothing but a traitor, and this village needs to realize that their prince is nothing but a traitor. Having said that, I I have a bad feeling of what's going to happen to Naruto. Ino looks at Shikamaru in confusion, what do you mean? Shikamaru rolls his eyes simple their prince fought Naruto, and although Naruto almost died all they're going to think is that their precious prince was almost killed. So, instead of marking the Ichiha as a missing nin, they'll take the easy way out of this mess. They will want either Naruto's head or banishment for his supposed mistreatment of their oh so noble Ichiha. Everyone is shocked, but after thinking they admit it's probably true. They all don't like it, a few like Hinata glare at Sakura, knowing this is all her fault. Some of the others are thinking along the same lines. Kakashi, who heard what Shikamaru had said, fears that judgment may come to pass as does Shizune. Several days later and Naruto finally wakes up. As he looks up he groans, crap, here again. I hate this place. He looks around the room noting that it was completely empty. Sighing in resignation he shrugs his shoulders, no surprises here. Just then the door opens, and in comes Tsunade. As she enters she sees that Naruto is awake. At first she's happy then, she remembers what will happen now he's awake so, you're awake. Naruto nods stiffly, how long have I been out Bachan? Tsunade lets it drop this time, probably the last time she will hear it, as she sighs, get dressed Naruto and follow me we need to talk in my office. Naruto nods and noticed she looks shattered and sad. He puts on his trousers and jacket, it seems that they cut his t-shirt to shreds or the Chidori did. He zips up his coat and as he leaves the room he sees an Anbu squad and they're all staring at him. As he starts walking he glances over his shoulder and finds them following him. He continues looking over his shoulder, is there a reason you're following me? 
One of them nods slowly, yes to make sure you visit the Hokage. Naruto just shrugs with a care, whatever. He arrives at the door, and the Anbu captain knocks before he opens the door and ushers, more like pushes Naruto inside. Naruto looks at Tsunade sitting stiffly at her desk, what's up Bachan? She sighs in sadness and resignation that she had failed one of her own, sit down please Naruto. Naruto seems confused, no Gaki, but my name. Wow, something bad must have happened. Naruto sits down and Tsunade sighs again, I'll get straight to the point. The council found out about your battle against Sasuke, and they were not pleased. They think you went there with the intention of killing Sasuke. Naruto is shocked, but I didn't, I tried talking to him, even begged him to return for Sakurichan's sake, but he wouldn't have it. He tried killing me. What did they expect me to do? Let him kill me? I almost died out there. Did they even circa await, oh what am I talking about? They're probably pissed I survived. Tsunade sighs, it is true the council doesn't like you, that claim was stopped. But, a new vote was done, and I'm afraid the vote was unanimous. Naruto Uzumaki, from this moment on you are banished from Konoha, never to step in these lands again under pain of death. Hand over your headband. Naruto is stunned, but deep down he knew this could eventually happen. He stands up and takes off his headband before dropping it on her desktop with a dull clang that echoed in the silent office, is that all Hokage-sama? He asked in a near whisper. Tsunade nods, but inside she's crying. She would like tell him that for days she's been trying to get them to change their minds, but what would be the point? Naruto turns slowly and walks to the door without saying a word not even looking back once. When he opens the door the Anbu are all staring at him, but he hardly cares he leaves the Hokage Tower and heads to his home. He sees more glares than usual from everyone, but he hardly cares. As he gets to his apartment he sees Kakashi there. Naruto looks up here to see me off Kakashi-sensei. Or are you here to drag me out? Wouldn't put it past you, it's not as if you were ever a good sensei to me. Naruto doesn't wait for a reply, and if there was one he never heard it. He steps up to his door which has been kicked in, like he cares anymore. He sees his apartment is trashed, no surprise there either. He just heads into his room. He sees his wardrobe is open, and his clothes have all been slashed, he can even smell urine on them. At this point he's beyond caring. He goes to his bed and sits down until he hears Kakashi approach. Kakashi sighs as he loses himself in his thoughts, Sensei, I've now not only failed you and our team, but I've failed your son, my little brother as well. Kashina Akachan will never forgive me now. Sensei, I'm sorry. Looking at Naruto Kakashi locks his emotions away before he speaks to his student and little brother in a cold voice, I'm sorry Naruto, but you have to leave now, so please get what you need. Naruto scoffs and gets off the bed and lifts up several floorboards and pulls out two bags one is full of money not that Kakashi needs to know. The other contains items he's bought on his travels, again not that Kakashi needs to know. He puts the bags over his shoulders and walks past Kakashi without saying a word. The walk to the main gates is quiet, and Naruto's glad, he has nothing to say to him anyway. He finally arrives at the gate and finds that nobody is there, not that he expected anyone to be there anyway, all kept hush-hush from his friends. He gets to the gate, and Kakashi just walks away without saying a word or giving him a final glance. Naruto strangely is hurt by that, but chooses to ignore it. He gets to the gate and sees Izumo and Kitetsu. Naruto likes those too, they see him as he approaches. Kitetsu sighs heavily, sad to see you go Naruto, your pranks were funny as hell, it's going to be pretty dull around here. Izumo nods in agreement, yeah, banishment for trying to bring back a traitor. That's harsh, heard he almost killed you. Naruto nods in return, yeah, shoved a chidori into my chest that our sensei taught him, how's that for ironic? Well, I hope to be seeing you guys again one day, kami willing, and the creeks don't rise. You two were pretty cool in my opinion, so catch you later. Kitetsu sighs, what you planning to do? Naruto shrugs, travel I guess, haven't really thought about it yet. Well, I better go, probably got a time limit before they execute me for being here too long. Izumo sighs, this really is a harsh punishment to do to you, well, good luck Naruto. The Tetsu nods, yeah, good Luke. Hey. Almost forgot, we got you something. He passes Naruto a scroll, it's got food in it, when we found out what they did to you we went and got you as much food and water that would fit in that scroll. Should last you about a week or so. Naruto takes the scroll, touched that the gate guards would think about him in such a way, thanks, guys, was all he could get out before his voice cracked with emotion. They both shake his hand before he turns around and leaves. He doesn't even bother to turn around for one last look just climbs up a tree and jumps away. It's been two days since Naruto's banishment and the streets are celebrating parties all day long. The Konohan Ein are not celebrating though they're all still in shock and in some cases more than pissed off. Shikamaru won't talk to his dad, he just glares at him. Most of the others are the same. Other than Tenten, of course. 
She has no parents to glare at, but still, she's angry with the villagers. They're all together now as there are no missions. For the first hour, not a word was spoken, they'd look around and see all the villagers laughing and celebrating like there was something good to celebrate about. None of them know about the QB being sealed in Naruto. They watch the villagers and shake their heads. Then Kiba speaks up, this is messed up. We've just lost a friend and those damn idiots are all over the village celebrating. I just want to bash some of their heads in. Shikamaru sighs, our parents seem to be the same I can't even look at my dad right now, let alone speak to him. I guess I was right though it's troublesome. Toji sighs as well, at least they banished him and didn't kill him. Everyone nods at that then Tenten sighs so where do you think he'll go? He's still only 12 and it's dangerous out there all by himself. Sakura eventually speaks up, a lot of the nine have ignored her lately for her comments concerning Naruto, he might visit Tazuna in Wave Country, he did say he would return to visit, then, well, there's Gara. maybe he'll visit Suna to see his friend over there. They all nod as Lee speaks and not too loudly, still though, he's only one person what if he gets attacked by missing nins. He can take on Genin and maybe most Jnin, but what if he comes up against a Jnin level missing nin? They all nod at that, but there is little they can do. They're all sad at his banishment. Some more than others, the ones who were in really nice to him like Sakura and Ino. Sakura at first was unsure of her feelings towards the situation, her parents were over the moon, and at first, she was too because he had hurt Sasuke kun. But then she realized that Sasuke kun probably wouldn't have listened to reason no matter who was talking, and he did almost kill Naruto. After lots of thought she realized something, she realized that she'd never want Naruto banished. Meanwhile, Naruto's been walking for two days, but not really heading to a specific place until he reached a bridge. He stops upon seeing his name and grins. It's the first time he's done that in days they named it after me huh? Wow, that's cool suck on that everyone. A bridge was named after me. He's about to walk off when he remembered he said he would return. Well he has nothing better to do. He crosses the bridge that he helped guard and smiles again as he keeps on walking until he sees someone he recognizes. He grins wider and approaches her, excuse me missus. Tsunami turns around, yes. What can I Naruto? Why this is a nice surprise. Naruto nods, yay told you I'd come back. She smiles, are you with your team? Naruto shakes his head no, a lot has happened since we came here. She then notices he isn't wearing his headband and notices he's not his hyperactive self, come on Naruto, I'll make you some tea and we can talk about what's happened. Naruto nods, do you want help with those? She smiles at his offer, why not she passes him one of the bags and they talk on the way but not about Naruto, more about wave country. It's prospered since Gato's downfall. The walk doesn't take long, but Naruto is shocked when she takes him to a massive house. As she sees his shock she chuckles, they made Tazuna the mayor after the bridge was built. Naruto smiles, that's cool. She nods, yeah, it is come on in. She steps inside and Naruto follows her, and they put the groceries away, and she makes some tea. Just as they're about to start the door opens, and in comes Inari and Tazuna. They walk into the kitchen and see Naruto, Inari grins, Naruto and Ayasen. Naruto smiles, hey Inari, man you've grown up. Azuna smiles it's good to see you Naruto where is your team? At that Naruto's smile drops, you might as well sit down. They all sit down and Naruto tells them what happened. They're all shocked Inari is angry though, treating his Anais in this way. Tsunami sighs, so what are you going to do Naruto? Naruto shrugs, not sure really, travel I guess. Maybe visit Suna and see Gara. after that. I really have no idea. She nods and Tazuna sighs, I can't believe they would do that, Sasuke made his choice. It seems to me they just used any excuse to get rid of you. Naruto nods, yeah, probably. The Zuna nods, well, well you're here, you up for a mission. There's been bandits trying to set up a toll on the bridge I was going to request the Kanoha deal with it, but with this I think I'll not rely on them anymore. So, you up for it. I can pay and you can stay here for a while. There's a boat leaving in two weeks and it's traveling to the border of Suna. Naruto nods, yeah, that would be fine. So tell me about this mission. Tsunami stands up and motions to her son, come, Inari let these two discuss the mission. Inari nods, see you soon Naruto and Ayasen. Naruto nods back and turns to Tazuna to discuss the mission. Two weeks later. Naruto has just woken up. The mission against the bandits was almost too easy, easy enough that Naruto and 50 clones dealt with all the bandits in 10 minutes flat. Caught them all unaware and drunk. Well he did have to kill a few of them most were just knocked out and they were taken away later on. Today is the day he leaves the land of waves. He's promised to come back again but isn't sure when. He gets a hug from Tsunami who's packed him several lunches which he stored in scrolls. He's also bought some new clothes he finally got out of those orange monstrosities for two reasons, one Tsunami finally got it through Naruto's thick skull, that it would do him more harm than good, even more so now he's literally all alone. 
The second reason is he wanted to change who he is, people from Konoha know him as wearing bright orange and he wants nothing to do with Konoha anymore. They banished him so why should he care? He only really cares about the Ichirakus. It seems that in the end, Tsunade's friendship was all false. Little did he know she really did care, but was holding in her tears for the person she saw as a son. Naruto got another big hug from Tsunami which left a blush on his face and a smirking Tazuna. He had a handshake from Tazuna and a hug from Inari. He then continued his journey arriving at the port and boarded the boat. It took just two days to get to the border, and Naruto helped out on the boat. It was a fishing boat after all so he helped them fish. He actually rather enjoyed it if he's honest. When he said goodbye the captain was sad to see him go. Naruto continued his journey stopping off to get some clothes for the sand, a hood and some looser clothes. He then continued the journey on the way he got attacked by bandits. They picked a bad day to attack him though, because his water had just run out and he was cranky. When the 50 bandits demanded Naruto hand over everything he had, he created 500 clones and left the clones to deal with the bandits and to search them for water. If there was none to dispel but. If there was to follow him. One clone returned with over 25 water flasks definitely a bad day for the bandits. He had to enter a cave one night to get out of a sandstorm which totally sucked. He finally arrived at Suna two days later he was stopped at the gates. The guard looks at Naruto, what is your business traveler? Naruto smiles, come to visit a friend, Gara. The guard looks at Naruto, you know Gara. Naruto nods, yeah, we met at the Chknin exams. The guard sighs a bad day for us, that, tricked by Orochimaru. Can I ask who you are? Naruto sighs trying to keep a low profile, just say Whiskers is here to see Gara. Whiskers? Naruto nods, yeah, he should get who I am. From that. The guard nods in return, I will get someone to inform him. Did it take you long to get here? A few days. Would have been here two days ago but got stuck in a sandstorm. Man they suck. The guard chuckles, I'm sure they do, okay, wait right here. Naruto nods and sits down to wait. After a few minutes, he hears a female voice speaking to the guard he spoke to, then hears footsteps which stop next to him. He then hears the voice, why do you want to speak to Gara? Naruto looks up and smiles, hey Tamari long time no see. Naruto. What are you doing here? She helps him up and he brushes himself off, a long story, man walking across that desert sucks. How do you do it? She grins, practice, hey, are you hungry? Naruto nods yay. She nods, well then, come on, Gara will be happy to see you wait. Are you here alone? Naruto nods, long story remember. She nods of course. They walk to the Sabaku compound and when they enter Gara is sitting down, but is surprised to see Naruto following Tamari inside, Naruto what are you doing here? Naruto grins, can't a friend visit a friend? Gara nods, of course have a seat. Naruto takes off the cloak and hood, and they notice not only no orange clothes, but no leaf headband. Naruto notices and smiles a few minutes later Tamari comes back with sandwiches and tea by then Kankaram has joined them. They quickly eat then Naruto sighs, okay long story short I was banished. Naruto watched the three sand siblings as they took in what Naruto just told them. They all seem shocked, but Gara seems the most pissed, why would they banish you, their prince as you call, him betrayed them. Did they expect you to just roll over and die if he thought back? Naruto nods, pretty much it seems. The Mari sighs, they're idiots to banish someone with potential after all you did for them during the invasion. You risk your life to take on my brother to protect that worthless village for Kami's sake. Naruto shrugs, maybe you're right still with their fear of me for holding the QB they jumped at the chance to get rid of me. She nods as Kankram speaks up, so what now, what are you going to do? Naruto shrugs, not really sure, continue wondering I suppose. I'll find a place to call home soon. Gara thinks over what his first and only friend is saying before voicing his concern, will you be okay? Even you know one person alone out there is not an easy thing. Naruto shrugs unconcerned, clone army remember? I'll be fine, is it okay if I visit the library though just to chill for a while? Gara nods, I don't see why not, you can stay here too. No point in living at a hotel when you're my friend, so stay here okay. Naruto smiles, thanks guys I'd like that. The Mari smiles as well, I'll show you to the room you'll be staying in whilst you're here. Naruto nods and follows Tamari while Kankram and Gara talk, we should so get him to join Suna he's a good ninja, Kankram says to his brother, he seemed a bit immature when we first met him, but this seems to have matured him up a bit. You know, the council wants you as the new Kazikage speak to them about it. Gara nods in agreement, I'll think about it, but I'm not sure if he will want to, but I can ask. Just then Tamari comes back in and sits down, wow he put his bag down on the bed, then sat down and pretty much fell asleep. He's probably exhausted mentally and physically so are we going to try and get him to join us. The village likes Naruto for changing you, plus he could become a great ninja. 
Are and odds that's what we were both discussing we let him rest for now. There's no harm in asking, Kanoha made a grave mistake in forcing out Naruto. They both agree on that. They know someone with Naruto's chakra and mantra of never giving up could be valuable to Suna, but they decide to start this tomorrow as it's getting late, so they all head off to bed. The next day Naruto wakes up, man I haven't slept that well in well, ever he's already dressed so he heads downstairs and sees the three siblings around the table eating breakfast, Tamari sees him coming and brings his breakfast over with some tea and coffee, not knowing which he likes. He sits down, morning guys, haven't slept that good in, well forever. Tamari smiles, it's understandable especially with the banishment you're probably both physically and mentally exhausted. Naruto nods, yeah, you're probably right, but even my bed back hoe, well in Kanoha wasn't that comfy. Hankram grins, aim to please. Naruto nods, so do you guys know your affinities? They all nod then Tamari speaks, Gara, and I have the wind element Kankram is able to use wind, lightning, earth and water what about you? Naruto is shocked wow that's pretty cool Kankram as for myself, I have no idea never really thought about it. Tamari smiles and pulls out some paper from her robe, here put some chakra onto this the paper it will do different things, depending on what your affinity is fire. The paper will ignite and turn to ash. If it's wind. The paper will split in two. If it's lightning. The paper will wrinkle. If it's earth. The paper will turn to dirt and crumble away. If it's water. The paper will become wet or damp. Naruto takes the paper and puts some chakra into it and it splits in half, then wrinkles Tamari smiles, you have wind and lighting that's good. Naruto smiles, that's cool I guess. Tamari nods wait didn't your sensei teach you all about this? Naruto scoffs Kakashi teach us. Yeah right, he spent all his time on the trader, taught us teamwork and tree climbing. The three siblings are shocked at that bit of news as Gara sighs, his reputation does not go with what you say, but I believe you. Tamari smiles, well we can't really teach you walking on water as we don't have that much we could help you with some wind jutsus, we are the village that has the most users after all. Naruto smiles at Tamari's offer, that would be cool. She smiles so how about your tojutsu and ninjutsus? Naruto sighs, my tojutsu is pretty bad, pervy sage helped a bit over the month with my tojutsu, oh wait. He did help me with walking on water, I was having problems with it because that freak Orochimaru put a seal on me. He also made me sign the toad summoning contract, but I can't do it anymore the council probably made pervy sage cancel the contract. Damari nods, well seems you learned more under this pervy sage than your own sensei who is this pervy sage anyway. Naruto rolls his eyes, Jiraiya the toad sage. All three are wide-eyed as a shocked Gara speaks, you trained under the toad Sanin. Naruto nods, yeah, he helped me for my fight against Niji. I learned the walking in water and the summoning jutsu during that month. They all nod as Tamari smiles, how about a friendly spar I can see your tojutsu and maybe learn you a wind jutsu if you impress me enough. Naruto nods sure why not. Two weeks later. Damari's been spending a lot of time with Naruto helping him with his tojutsu and helping him learn some wind jutsus, after asking Baki of course who was okay with it. Also during this time, Gara was talking to the council about Naruto he told them about Naruto's banishment but told them to keep his name a secret which they agreed to. The next subject was also Naruto and about letting him join the ranks. They said they would discuss it and get back to him with an answer. During this time Tamari also suggested he read up on information with being unaffiliated, it would be a good idea to know the names and places of everywhere. Whilst he's looking through one of the books whilst Tamari's reading another he happens to come across something surprising and a place he could call home. He's reading carefully when Tamari looks up, she's noticed he's been letting his clones read it first, which she thought was pointless, until he told her of its special ability to regain everything it read. All that knowledge is returned to him when it dispels, he told her. She was shocked and amazed at that ability it would cut down the training time. With his large chakra he could learn to do jutsus that some people took months maybe years to learn, and he could learn it in hours or days. But now he's reading a book word for word, so she puts her book down and stands up and looks over Naruto's shoulder. Naruto is shocked, there was a village, now destroyed, called Yuzushiagakur in Fire Country. It once held a mighty clan long since destroyed, he thought that was interesting until he turned the page and found out the clan was the Yuzumaki clan, I'm from a clan. Damari has also read that and is shocked as well, I wonder if Naruto's the last of the clan. Naruto smiles broadly, I think I've found my next destination. He looks up, oh hey Tamari how long have you been there? She smiles, not long, I'd heard of the Whirlpool village and that it was destroyed. I didn't know there was a clan there and the Yuzumaki clan at that. Wait a sec, I'll be right back. She walks off and he continues reading then she comes back and sits next to him with a large book, he looks at the cover and sees it's a book about clans. She finds the page and opens it, and they both read it, they're both amazed. 
the Uzumaki clan were seal masters and very powerful, but were both respected and feared, and that ultimately resulted in their downfall. Both Naruto and Tamari were sad after reading this she closes the book, so you're going there, do you think you'll find anything it was destroyed years ago before you was even born? Naruto nods, yeah, I'm going there. I have to know if there is anything there. She nods, what would you do if you find anything? Naruto shrugs, no idea, maybe there could be other Uzumakis scattered about. Find them, maybe try and rebuild the clan. She nods, so much for him joining us. Still, this is a worthy goal, and he set his mind to it. If he finds nothing he could always join Suna, if Gara can get the council to say yes that is. Naruto smiles, seems I need to prepare. Looks like I'll have to stock up on supplies again. She nods, that would be a good idea. Gara has told me nobody but me, Gara, Kankram and the council know you're actually here like you asked. It's better this way. She nods and they put all the books away and leave the library. They stop off for some food before heading back to the Sabaku compound. Naruto's all happy about his new trip, so he rushes to his room to check his supplies. Gara and Kankram see the happy Naruto and are confused until Tamari fills them in. Gara is shocked about Naruto being from such a prestigious clan, even if it's now been destroyed, but he's sad his friend is leaving. The Mari sighs, I take it the council said yes. Yes, they approved the proposal earlier today. Unlike Kanoha it seems that our council values talented ninja no matter their circumstances, Gara informed her, while hinting at Naruto and his common affliction. It may not be over though, what if he finds nothing? We could give him the choice and it's up to him to say yes or no. That is true. Say he rebuilds the clan and the village an alliance with his village would be advantageous to us don't you think? Yes, an alliance with Naruto's village would be not only be advantageous, but a good way to strengthen ties with Fire Country, without having to deal with Konoha and that band of idiots they call a council. Two weeks later and Naruto's all stocked up and packed he's now at the gates. The council was saddened but understand after Gara explained why he was leaving and what could possibly happen if he rebuilds Yuzushi Agakur. An alliance between them could be a bonus that all could agree on. Naruto smiles he looks back at the Sabaku siblings and smiles, well guys I'm off. Gara nods, think on what I asked you. Of course Gara. if I find nothing I'll return. If I do and I rebuild Yuzushi Agakur an alliance with Sun Agakur it will happen. Gara nods and they shake hands. He gets a handshake from Kankaram and a hug, which made him blush, from Tamari, then he waves and then runs off and vanishes via Shunshin which Tamari taught him. It's been several days since Naruto left Sun Agakur, and he's now back in the land of fire. Luckily he's on the other side so nobody from Kanahagakur will see him, hopefully. He visits the capital and asks someone about Yuzushi Agakur and its exact location. A boat captain agrees to take Naruto there telling him that it should take a few hours. Whilst on the boat Naruto watches the water and smiles, I'm going to meet my clan home I can't wait. I know it will be mostly in ruins, but I can rebuild it. Whilst they're traveling the captain stops next to Naruto so what's the sudden interest in that place? It's been abandoned for years, well, it's been abandoned longer than you've been alive that's for sure. Naruto nods, if I find something I'll let you know. Are you a scavenger? No, I'm an Uzumaki. I see you're visiting your former clan's home then, didn't meet many of your clansmen, but they were a great clan. I have no idea about that, they were taken out before I was born remember? Beer drink this it's not sake, it's fruit juice. I don't drink on the rivers you never know what could happen. Naruto accepts the cup, and they both drink they talk about the land of fire well mostly the captain Naruto just listens. An hour later they arrive the captain nods, I'll be back in a few hours in case you find nothing. Thank you Captain Miku. Naruto then jumps overboard and starts his trek up the beach after walking for a short while he comes to a large gate, there's a broken sign above the name Yuzushi Agakur can barely be seen. Naruto enters through the gate and looks around and sighs, not much here. He starts searching the houses not there as many in good condition he finds one that seems to be intact, he looks around and smiles, seems this was the Yuzuka Gay's place let's take a look inside. Naruto looks inside and finds a room that must have been an armory, but it's empty, no surprise there. He does see a hit aid on the floor he picks it up and traces a thumb over the symbol of a swirl he ties it around his bicep and moves on. He finds some tattered books but nothing of significance, so he keeps moving until he sees a bedroom the roof is still intact, so at least he's got a place to sleep which is good. He then leaves the house and starts walking he sees bones and sighs, could they be former clansmen's bones or enemies? He turns away and keeps walking until he gets a sudden dizziness spell and clutches a wall what the hell was that? He starts to walk again, and a sudden dizziness appears again, so he stops and turns away, the dizziness goes away when he does. What was that? He asks himself as he comes to an old destroyed temple and sighs, wonder what this place was. He puts his hand on the wall and gets a sharp stabbing feeling in his hand, so he pulls his hand back what the hell. 
damn that hurt. He's about to move away when he hears a sound and turns back around where he placed his hand and sees the rock moving. He raises an eyebrow until it fully opens. At first he just stares at it, but he gets a sinking feeling it's telling him to go inside. He steps forward and torches come to life, it freaks him out a little, but he shrugs it off and follows the lit torches. After a minute's walk, he comes out into a dark room he raises an eyebrow and waits until the whole room lights up, and he's amazed, it's like a library down here. He grins, now we're talking. He starts looking around he sees Tejutsu scrolls, ninjutsu, and kinjutsu scrolls as well. He also sees the Yuzumaki symbol on them and grins, must be the Yuzumaki styles, interesting I'll master them all. He's looking around when he hears a voice who are you? Naruto spins around pulling out a kunai, who are you? He answers back. An old man materializes and smiles, I am the keeper of this temple. For you to be in here means you are in Yuzumaki. That's right. My name is Naruto Yuzumaki and you are. I am a hologram boy, who are your parents? I don't know, I'm an orphan, Naruto replied softly as he looked down. That's no problem boy, we can take a blood sample and run it through that seal jutsu. That should tell us who your parents are, or, rather were. Is that even possible? The old man chuckles, have you forgotten who the Yuzumaki were? We were seal masters, nothing is beyond our limits. Doubt this is true, but oh well. So what do I do? You see that paper? Well you put some blood on it and then add some of your chakra, the paper, and I will do the rest. Naruto does as asked then the hologram does some hand signs and looks at the paper. The blood is written two names down, making the old man smile, quite impressive parents you have Naruto. Your mother was Kashina Yuzumaki, and your father was Minato Namikaze I remember him visiting the village. He was only a boy back then. My father became the Yandai Mei Hokage. The old man smiles well didn't he grow in stature. Do you know what this means boy? No sir, what does it mean Elder Yuzumaki Jiji? You are the head of the Yuzumaki and the Namikaze clans. As such you are the new wielder of the blade of the Yuzumaki. You see, only the clan head wields the blade as there is a special seal on the blade, meaning that only an Yuzumaki can wield that blade, anyone else will get a nasty shock that will paralyze them. The old man then points over to the wall, follow me boy and do what I tell you my young lord Yuzumaki. The hologram and Naruto walks over to a wall the elder points to the wall, place your hand there and use blood again. Naruto does so and a hidden compartment is reviled, and the elder smiles, the blade of the Yuzumaki is now yours young master Yuzumaki. Wow, it's heavy. That is why you must train in all that is here. It's now all yours young master. Read the scrolls and become a great man, oh young lord do you know what this means? Even more surprises elder. The elder smiles, yes, you are the new Yuzukage. Naruto is shocked wait, is that like the Hokage? The elder nods, yes, but that means you are the equivalent of the Hokage, but with this village, it is the Yuzukage. You know of the Hokage of course, but there is also the Kazikage, the leader of Sunagakur, the Mizukage the leader of Kurigakur, the Raikage the leader of Kumagakur, and the Tsuchikage the leader of Awagakur. As such you must visit the capital and speak to the Daimum, as there are steps to take to be recognized as the Yuzukage. The blade is but one step, there is also documentation to prove you are the rightful Yuzukage, although I'd advise you to age some first. That would be wise I guess I'm 12 now what do you think 16 or something? That would be ample time to learn everything. You'll have plenty of hours to read, by the time these four years have passed you will hate paperwork. Who said I have to read it? The elder raises an eyebrow, but before he can say anything Naruto does some hand signs Taju Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. The Shadow Clone Jutsu, strange for someone so young such as you to have it but, you're also an Yuzumaki, and you hold the QP as well. Most Yuzumakis learned that Jutsu as well as normal Bunshin no Jutsu, but many came out almost dead. I failed the gen in exams three times because I couldn't make a normal clone. A traitorous idiot called Mizuki tricked me into stealing the scroll of seals and told me to learn a jutsu to pass. I learned Kage Bunshin no jutsu, he paid the price though, I beat him senseless with over 100 clones. The elder chuckles more the fool him. Now, as well as tojutsu, kinjutsu and ninjutsu, you will also learn kinjutsu. The Yuzumakis are seal masters as you know, given time and training, so will you, now there is a bed over there Lord Yuzukage, I'd advise you get some rest while your clones can start reading. Naruto nods and the clones get to work, he then goes over to the bed and lies down he didn't think he was that tired, but as soon as his head hits the pillow he's asleep. Several hours later Naruto wakes up he sits up and yawns and the elder approaches him, you were very tired my lord Yuzukage, might I suggest food? There's a kitchen over there, now, can you cook boy? No, not really. Not to worry, I can advise you. Your clones are doing well, they've already read several books and scrolls. I advise them to go outside and train since I've taught them a seal, so nobody will detect them whilst they train. Thank you Elder Yuzumaki. 
Not a problem so let's get cooking shall we? Naruto nods and for the next 30 minutes, the hologram teaches him how to cook eggs, sausages, bacon and beans, along with some toasted bread. There are also some very flavorful drinks in the fridge. How it's all still fresh after this amount of time is amazing, until the elder says that everything is sealed in a special seal that preserves everything for years and even decades. After eating the elder then tells Naruto to sit down and explains that Yuzushi Agakure will have to be rebuilt, but they will need funding the Nami Kazi money would work, but when Naruto informs the elder he's been banished, the elder nods well, there's becoming a hunter nin for a while. Do you know anyone who could help with the rebuild? Naruto thinks then smiles, yes, I know just the man, Tazuna the bridge builder in wave country. I see, well I'd advise you to train for a while before visiting him. We can't have people know just yet about Yuzushi Agakur. When you are older you then can inform the daemon. Now, train for a month or two before seeking out this Tazuna as you called him. I understand Elder Sensei. Now Naruto how do you feel about Kanahagakur at the moment? Naruto is confused at that question, well they banished me so I don't know, but I've always been hated because of the QB, why do you ask? When the Yuzumaki clan was under attack we sent numerous messages to Kanahagakur for aid, we received none, and our clan was wiped out, Kanahagakur are no longer his friends to us, I suggest you cut ties with Konoha and demand everything back that was in the agreement. They were allies and did nothing when Yuzushi Agakur needed them. I can't believe Jiji would do that. You are young boy, politics sometimes gets in the way of friendships, but I will drop it for now. Now on to training, dispel some of the clones and then start your training. Summon a clone and leave him here in several hours. I will send him to get you later, and I will also start teaching you Kenjutsu. Understood Elder Sensei. Naruto looks around Elder Sensei. Are there any decent clothes around here to wear? Of course young Lord Yuzuka gave follow me. A few minutes later Naruto is wearing black anbu pants with a black thin jumper with a long black trench coat. Naruto summons one clone and informs him to stay, then he leaves the hidden temple and starts training. The elder teaches the clone Naruto left meditation. Several hours later Naruto is tired when the clone comes to get him, and he starts to train in Kenjutsu. Naruto finds out he's a natural at Kenjutsu, but the elder tells him it's the Uzumaki genes coursing through his body. Naruto nods and continues. Several months later. Naruto wakes up, his 13th birthday was a few days ago, and it was the first that he could do what he wanted without hiding from insane villagers. The elder looks over at Naruto, so are you ready to go Lord Yuzukage? Naruto nods, yeah, I'm ready I've got some money saved through being a hunter nin. The elder nods you have learned quickly young lord and you have been blooded. I'm pleased to say that it didn't affect you as it affects some. As long as you take no pleasure ending a life you'll be fine, that's what sets one like you apart from those that kill for the fun of it. Naruto nods in agreement, yes because the ones I have killed deserve to die for what they were doing. Indeed now go and be careful young lord. I would be careful elder sensei, believe it. Naruto has already packed so he just grabs his scrolls and leaves the temple. He seals up again before he gets into a boat with the same captain as a few months ago, and then makes his way to the land of waves. The land of waves. Naruto arrives there two days later. He stops at the bridge and smiles, still can't believe they named it after me. He chuckles and starts running through the village until he makes it to the house Tazuna lives in. He knocks and Tsunami opens the door. As she sees Naruto she blushes as she notices what he's wearing, why hello Naruto-kun, come in. Why is it that every time I see you, you always looks more handsome than the last time I saw you? Naruto smirks, good jeans I guess, is Tazuna home I have a big job for him if he's up for it. Tazuna hears his name mentioned from the other room, ah Naruto welcome back like the look boy, now, what's this job? Naruto begins to grin like a fox, how would you like to restore a whole village? I'll pay of course. Naruto looks on the newly rebuilt Yuzushi Agakur, Naruto smiles as he sees everything's been rebuilt or in the case of the Izuka Gaze mansion repaired. Tazuna stands next to him along with Tsunami and Inari, who came to see the finished village. Tazuna smiles, well my boy our job is done do you have any idea of what you're going to do with all these empty houses? You do need people to live here and I happen to have a suggestion though. Naruto looks at Tazuna, ask away. Tazuna nods well you remember the purging years ago of the Kekai Genkais. Well a lot of people came to wave country and not just there but all over the continent trying to get away. I could ask them if they would be interested in moving here. I mean we built a bank here and shops and a harbor. Luckily enough many many years ago I came here with my father, so when you asked if I could rebuild, I jumped at the chance to do this for you Naruto, do you like what I've done? I knew I made the right choice with asking you, this is better than I could have ever imagined, and as to your suggestion, I would be happy for them to live here. You never became the Hokage, but you are the Izukage, when you visit the daemon that is, Tsunami gushed as she stared at her father's finished work. That I am Tsunami, that I am. The time isn't right yet. 
but I will visit the capital soon and maybe speak to someone about refugees and them possibly moving to my lands, so it could be sooner than I think. That in itself isn't a problem, I don't mind doing it early, although I should ask the daemon if I do speak to him to hold off announcing me as the Izuka Gay for two years. The Zun and Odds, oh by the way, there's a ninja academy here to rebuild the ninjas. I know they won't be Yuzumakis, but Yuzushi Agakur wasn't all Yuzumakis. Naruto scoffs, I see. Tsunami looks at Tazuna and nods so he sighs, I know I'm asking a lot you Naruto, and you've helped me out a lot, but, we have a problem in the land of waves. What's the problem Tazuna? You know I'll do anything to repay you for all this. You even said I was charging too much, so I'm guessing it was a thank you of sorts. Tazuna nods, you could say that now, but this problem here has been ninja in the land of waves causing trouble. They are not ninjas of Kiri or Konoha, plus they have a base there, I get a bad vibe from them. Have you seen the headband? The Nari spoke at that point it had like a music symbol. Naruto clenches his fist on hearing that, sound, what are they up to now? No problem, I'll deal with them all personally, but why didn't you speak to Konoha? Well I cut all ties to them after you told us of your banishment, and I wasn't alone, the whole village was outraged that their hero, you, was treated the way you were. They pretty much demanded I cut ties with Konohagakur. I see, okay, I leave clones here and follow you back and deal with this base. I thank you Naruto for your saving us again. Inari smiles, hey, Nai-chan. Can I become a Yuzushi Agakur ninja? Naruto looks at him then Tsunami who just sighs, only if your mother says it's okay. He's been asking me this since he found out my father was rebuilding your home. I'm okay with it, but please take care of him. I would, of course, do that. Okay, let's go, the sooner we deal with the sound base the better. On Hagakur. Sakura is walking down the street many things have changed for her in the last two years, not only had Sasuke left, but Naruto her other teammate had been banished. At first she was happy, but that soon changed when her friends distanced themselves from her as they were not happy with the decision. Most still are, including herself. She regained her friendship with Ino, but it's still not fully best buddies as she would want. It does seem that the partying has died down though. She hated it, how could the village party after banishing someone? Apart from her friends, as they are now all her friends, there are others who she hears still talking about Naruto. The Ichirakus, do they miss him? So does she, even at the hospital some of the female nurses talk about Naruto. Some of them she's even heard bad mouthing her for how she treated Naruto years ago, and it always made her sad. Sometimes she'd act all tough, but inside she's crying. She just wants to apologize to him, but there's been no word of him in two years. She even heard Jiraiya was furious when he found out. Tsunade told her that the council demanded Naruto's signature be removed from the Toad contract, and Jiraiya had no choice but to do it. But that was over two years ago now and he hasn't stepped foot in Kanoha since. She's noticed Tsunade is sad about that, and she's still taking it badly. They had a strange relationship, sort of a mother and son or grandmother and grandson relationship, she doesn't know which. She really does miss him though, she hopes he's still alive. She hasn't even told anyone her feelings over the two years, but she's thought a lot about Naruto, sometimes to the point of imagining what it would have been like if she accepted one of his dates. Although she likes Sasuke-kun, she admitted Naruto wasn't ugly or anything. He had a chubby face that's for sure, but he was pretty cute not that she'd tell anyone that. The Land of Waves. It's been a day since they returned and Naruto and Tazuna have been discussing the problem. Naruto says he will just deal with them, but tells Tazuna to keep everyone away from the Sound Nins. Tazuna nods and agrees to do that. Naruto then leaves he puts on his black devil or gargoyle hunter nin mask. It's more like a gargoyle, Inari says. Naruto has already scouted out the base and knows the numbers. Only 50 and led by a red-headed woman, although she doesn't seem to be a bitch from what Tazuna told him. She acts polite, but she also gets angry when she sees the sound nin bullying the locals. Tazuna also told him that the sound nin don't respect her. Naruto arrives at the base and creates several clones. He sends them off to kill any and all the sentries. Normally Naruto would show remorse for killing, but not for sound nin, and not for bullies and rapists. He's killed a few missing nin that had become rapists and murderers. For them, they only receive a swift death. He's in the bingo book under the gargoyle of the darkness for a reason. After a few minutes, several clones dispel and Naruto knows that all the sentries are dead. The clones have used Henge no Jutsu to replace them if anyone approaches, and if any do they are to share the same fate as the sentries. Naruto then pulls out his sword, which proves he's the Izuka Gay. He's named it Fox's Bane, and he walks straight at the entrance. Several sound nins see him. As one all they see is a black figure approaching them, and then they see the black mask and the large sword and they panic, all of them at once know he's the gargoyle of the darkness. A Jinin stops them and he gulps, men, don't fear, he's just one man. We can take him. Just then all the clones jump down, and like Naruto approaches the group of sound nin. 
Now the Jinnin gulps loudly, shit, we're done for. The Naruto clones deal with the sound nins as the Jinnin defeats two clones, and Naruto fights him personally. With his tojutsu style Yuzuken, Whirling Fist, and his Kenjutsu style Yuzuriken, Whirling Dragon Blade, he quickly cuts him down. He doesn't even stop. The Jinnin isn't dead and tries to attack him, but a clone impales him through his skull from behind. Naruto keeps walking into the base cutting down any sound nin he sees after searching for the women, after a while he sees an office, cuts the door down and steps in. He sees the redeed, she seems paralyzed with fear after witnessing what he's done on the monitors. Naruto looks at her you, you are their leader. She just nods, I've heard they never respected you, yet you still work for that snake. Your life is forfeit, tell me, what is your name before you die? The women gulps. Shit, it's the gargoyle of the darkness. My name's is Karen Yuzumaki. Naruto glares at her after hearing that name. A member of my own clan working for that snake. She's tarnished their name enough I see, then Karen Yuzumaki, know that you have tarnished the Yuzumaki name by serving that snake. Know that Naruto Yuzumaki, son of Kashina Yuzumaki, and the Nuyuzukage, will take your life. Karen is shocked, he's my cousin I thought I was the last Yuzumaki left. Wait. Would you kill your own cousin? Cousin? It matters not, you still serve that snake. Parent starts to cry, please don't kill me cousin, I thought I was the last remaining Yuzumaki after my mum died. Orochimaru took me in, I know he's a cruel man, and I hate what he does, but I'm serving him to stay alive. Naruto sighs, very well, I'm destroying this base. You can go wherever you want as once I'm done here I'm returning home to Yuzushiagakur. But it's nothing but rubble. It's been rebuilt thanks to Tazuna, the bridge builder from here. Let me come with you, please, your family. The only family I have left, please, believe me I want to help you. Naruto looks at her and takes off his mask and really looks at her, she then notices something different he has blonde hair not red, she also thinks he's kind of cute, you, want to follow me, hmm? Why should I allow that? She sighs, we're family for one wait. Sasuke mentioned you, Orochimaru said you were banished. Yes, that much is true. What happened to your mother Lady Kashina my aunt? I never found out. She died, how? I don't know how exactly. So what about your father? That is well, died the day I was born, maybe my mother also. So, you grew up alone. If you're coming pack what you want but I'm taking this place down. You have 15 minutes before the tags go off. Okay. You know, Sasuke said you wore all orange, this look is much better. Naruto scowls at the traitor Ichiha's name, do not mention that snake or that bastard Ichiha in my presence again. It's bad enough the first Yuzukage was from that damned clan. Perrin nods understood cousin. After a short wait, while well, Naruto sets the explosives tags that destroys the base, Karen uses a Katen Jutsu to burn all the dead bodies, and they start walking. They've been walking slowly at first, they went back to Tazuna, and he paid Naruto for his help. He was shocked to see the redeed, but more shocked to find out she is Naruto's cousin. From then on she was treated nicely. Tsunami hugged her and demanded that she look after her cousin or she would not be happy. Perrin smiled and said she would protect not only her cousin, but her Yuzuka Gay also. Tsunami nodded and they stayed for some food before they got on their way. Tsunami hugged both Karen and Naruto as they left. At first, they were quiet Karen kept glancing at her cousin so happy she had a family she told him that stories about her mother and his mum when they were little, and that they both used to be little terrors running around pranking everyone. Naruto told her that must have been where he got his pranking ways from. They've been walking for up to an hour when Naruto meets some people he'd rather forget, as he's still not happy with Konoha for their treatment of his clan, and not helping when they needed it the most although personally, he holds no grudges to them. Perrin being a sensor type, had informed him that there were ninjas approaching. Naruto pulls out Fox's bane and waits for them, after a few minutes he sees them, Team 10 of Asuma Siratobi, Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Shinji Akimichi, Naruto tells her under her breath. You know them cousin? Yes. When Team 10 see him and Karen they stop they see one guy all in black with a black mask on with only Asuma, knowing he's the gargoyle of the darkness. Ino sees him and immediately thinks he's cute not that she can see his face. Shikamaru and Chimjai look up they see the two figures one in black with a massive sword in one hand. To Chimjai the guy's creepy. Naruto looks at them all Karen looks at him so who are they? Pretending she doesn't know. Naruto smirks behind the mask he points to Asuma Asuma Siratobi son of the Sandei Ami Hokage, Ino Yamanaka daughter of Anoichi Yamanaka. Seems you're growing up nicely. You always were attractive I guess. He then points to Shikamaru, Shikamaru Nara of the Nara clan, the laziest bastard I've ever seen, but smart as hell missing your cloud watching time are we Shika. He then points to Chimjai, Chimjai Akimichi always eating but a very strong clan. Team 10 are all shocked this guy knows who they all are, and such personal things about them. Perrin nods, I see we should be going I want to see our rebuilt home. 
Naruto nods at her, then grabs Karen and uses Wind Shunshin to disappear. Team 10 are still shocked they're all in deep thought, though it's actually Ino that figures it out. The voice was covered by the mask, but she knew that voice whilst the others are confused Ino smirks, damn Naruto's grown up, looked like he had a nice body wonder who that woman was though. Shikamaru looks at Ino that was Naruto. She just nods and the rest of Team 10 are shocked. Whilst Ino's imagining touching his body they all start walking back and a blush comes onto Ino's face because of her perverted thoughts, she finds it strange she's thinking such dirty thoughts about Naruto, but oh well. It took a few hours for Naruto and Karen to make it back to Yuzushi Agakur. Karen was amazed and cried her mother told her many stories of Yuzushi Agakur, and Karen wished she could have seen it. Naruto and Karen walk through the village there are now some new people in the village refugees from Kurigakur, and some from Wave getting away from the civil wars and the overcrowding of Wave country. They all know Naruto they know he's the Izuka gay, but he's asked them to only call him Lord Yuzumaki until he officially makes it known or just Naruto. The quite burly man walks up to Naruto Lord Yuzumaki you're back we heard you went to get rid of that problem in wave country. Naruto smiles yes, Yukio, not much of a threat. Yukio nods and who might this be Lord Yuzumaki. Before Naruto can reply Karen speaks my name is Karen Yuzumaki I'm Naruto's cousin. Yukio nods a pleasure to meet you Lady Yuzumaki, another Yuzumaki that is nice how do you like the rebuilt Yuzushi Agakur? Karen smiles it's amazing I never saw it before my mother told me so many good things I'm glad it's been built. Yukio nods as do we all he turns to Naruto Lord Yuzumaki, we have found a former academy school teacher here she's agreed to teach any kids who wish to become ninjas. Naruto nods excellent what rank was she? Yukio smiles she was Shnin rank, but she turned away from teaching when she saw how barbaric it became in Kurigakur. Naruto nods understood have you found any blacksmiths? Yukio nods yes at least three they have already started work. Naruto nods good work Yukio you're a ninja also wasn't you? Yukio nods that I was lord I was a ninja of Takigakur, but I got married and gave up my rank and moved to Kurigakur my wife wants to be trained also she's quite a bit younger than myself. Naruto nods that's fine what rank was you? Yukio smiles Jimin lord. Naruto nods good you will help them train in your spare time of course. Yukio nods of course lord, he nods lord, lady have a good day. He walks off. Naruto smirks still weird. Perrin smiles for me also this place looks amazing. Naruto nods yes more people come daily might have to visit the daimam earlier than scheduled. Perrin nods I'm coming too, right. Naruto nods of course. She smiles well show me around more. Naruto nods and they start walking. On Hagakur. Team 10 are all still in shock Asuma never really knew Naruto that well, but Shikamaru and Shinjai did and Ino well she knew him not that well mind you. They make it into the Hokage Tower and Tsunade sees them I see your mission went well. Asuma nods yes it did Lady Hokage it was on the way back myself and my team came into contact with someone. Tsunade nods I see and who might this person be who seems to have left your whole team shocked. Asuma coughs Naruto Yuzumaki Lady Hokage he was accompanied by a woman. Tsunade is in shock the Gaki's alive thank god no word in over two years, how did he look well healthy or bad? Asuma smiles well he doesn't wear orange anymore he was wearing all black and had a massive sword he's the gargoyle of the darkness. Tsunade is shocked, he's got quite a reputation okay well done team you can tell his friends and the Jinin from your friends teams, nobody else so tell Aruka that's it. Asuma nods understood Lady Hokage. They all leave the room as soon as they do Tsunade starts to cry, I'm so glad you're alive Naruto I wish I could see you again tell you much I missed you. Meanwhile, Asuma's walked off and now team 10 are looking for their friends, they surprisingly see them all together that is a surprise. It's Kiba who sees them first finally back guys. Shikamaru sighs keep it down you're so troublesome. Ino grins we saw someone a short while ago he's changed so much but we're certain it was him. Kiba nods well you gonna tell us. Ino grins Naruto and I must say he's looking good no longer in that hideous orange he wears all black, wears a black creepy mask, and has a massive sword, Asuma said he was called the gargoyle of the darkness, whatever that means. Denton is shocked wow, he's in the bingo book he's got a 20 million bounty on his head, but that's set up from Odo because he keeps fucking up their plans. Dottie has this weird sword that has like 6 attachments from what I've heard wonder where he got it hope I see him sometime and get to see it. Sakura is in shock, but inwardly she's smiling Naruto's alive thank god he's out of that orange also, but the bounty is a problem. Hanada smiles I knew it Naruto-kun still alive I'm so happy. Shikamaru smirks are we really surprised he's alive this is Naruto we're talking about still I wonder who that re is who was with him. Diba smirks Naruto's got a girlfriend. Shikamaru shrugs going by the chemistry I'm going with no, but it's hard to tell as he never took off that mask, man seeing someone dressed like that coming at you would scare the crap out of you. 
He doesn't know it, but Sakura, Ino, Hinata and weirdly enough Tenten are all jealous about this mystery woman well Ino's been jealous ever since she saw her. Hibanad so where do you think he's been for two years do you think he visited Wave and soon like Sakura said. Shikamaru shrugs no idea, but he's put on muscles, and if he is the gargoyle of the darkness, he's picked up some mad skills. Tenten nods I've got a copy of the bingo book it says her under his bounty run away, at the mere sight of him, unless you are guaranteed of beating him and his army of clones. Everyone looks at his profile and are all amazed that this is their friend there's a picture, and everyone gets light shivers down their spine seeing the image. Hinata smiles, it doesn't matter Naruto-kun is alive our friend is alive, and well, that's what matters right. Shino nods Hinata speaks the truth for two years we have wondered if he was alive, and now we know for sure that is the person you guys saw correct. Jai nods that's him I don't think anyone would forget a look like that, don't you think it kind of reminds you of that man from the Chknin exams, with a scar on his face. Ino smirks yay, it does, but Naruto-kun looks so much hotter, and he said I was attractive at least he's got his eyes opened. Again Sakura, Hinata and Tenten are jealous of their friend now who sees the looks and just sticks out her tongue at them. Meanwhile Asuma's walking to a bar for a drink his regular when he sees Kurenai, Maido Gai, Kakashi and Anko, he shrugs as he approaches them Maido grins Asuma, I take you had a youthful mission. Asuma shrugs youthful not really boring yes it was after the mission that's when things got interesting, but I need a drink first before I say anything. When he gets his drink they all sit on a table Asuma smirk seems we met someone our students know very well on the way back. Anko grins well who is it? Asuma sighs well I wasn't instructed to tell you, but whatever it was Naruto. The Kashi looks up from his book, did he look okay? Asuma grins oh he was doing just fine he's not only Naruto Uzumaki, he's also the gargoyle of the darkness from the bingo book. Anko grins that guy's awesome wow the little squirt's all grown up. Asuma nods he's easily six feet now put on muscles has that huge sword had a redeed with him, but from what I judged they were not together, Ino was totally jealous of her. I grins the youthfulness of Naruto is amazing. Kurenai grins he's sure grown up and his reputation is he's dangerous seems he abandoned the orange finally. Anko pouts the sucks I was planning on seducing him if I ever saw him now I find out he's only 14 that sucks. Everyone looks at her in shock she smirks give him a year or two and I'll still seduce him. Kurenai rolls her eyes sometimes you frighten me Anko. She grins I no wonder what he's been up to. Bakashi's not really paying attention he's just thinking about Naruto I'm glad you're alive Naruto I bet your parents are looking down on me with shame I should really have spoken to him before he left instead of saying nothing. It's been two months since Karen joined up with Naruto and Yuzushi Agakur she met the hologram Yuzumaki elder and he helped her grow stronger also she also has a look identical to Naruto and now sometimes she wears a skirt the only difference not really important they still went on hunts for missing nins. They're now in the land of snow, there was a group of Princess Koyuki's uncle's followers still around, and she got word of the gargoyle of the darkness in the area, so she hired him. Naruto and Karen easily dealt with the threat when they went to the princess she smiles, I must thank you once again my uncle's followers just don't stop coming, I thought it was dealt with years ago. Naruto smiles it has been a while Princess Yuki. Koyuki is confused have we met before. Naruto smiles and takes off his mask she sees the blonde hair and the whiskers, and is shocked Naruto is that you. He nods indeed it is. She smiles why you have grown up nicely much more handsome. Naruto blushes thank you Princess Yuki. She smiles then her smile drops when she doesn't see the leaf headband. Naruto what's going on did you leave Kanahagakur? Naruto cringes no, I was banished. She is shocked banished for what? Naruto tells her and she's shocked Sasuke betrayed the leaf and because you fraud him you're banished that's ridiculous. Naruto nods yes, but I have rebuilt my old home Yuzushi Agakur here with my cousin Karen Yuzumaki, we will soon visit the fire daemon and officially inform him of the village being rebuilt. She smiles my father told me about Yuzushi Agakur did family live there. Naruto nods my clan was from there as far as I know me, and Karen are the last of the Yuzumakis. Koyuki sighs I am so sorry but at least you found some family so who leads this village. Naruto smiles why the Yuzuka gay of course. Koyuki smiles maybe I could speak with this Yuzuka gay and form an alliance with him. Naruto smiles he turns to Karen what do you think, should I inform the Yuzuka gay about this possible alliance? She chuckles I think he knows. Koyuki is shocked you are the Yuzuka gay Naruto-san. Naruto nods that is correct Princess Yuki, although it's not been made official, yet we will be visiting the capital within the next few weeks to make it official. Koyuki smiles well we can still form an alliance, and as you are the most handsome Kage there is right now we can get down with the details. Naruto nods is it okay if Karen takes notes she's helping with with all the politics and stuff. Koyuki smiles I see no problem with that. 
After an hour Naruto has agreed to the alliance after speaking with Karen, all the details seem fair the village is still not fully operational, we are still taking in refugees from the civil war from Kurigakur. Boyuki smiles always the caring young man. Naruto smiles so how are you Princess Yuki? She smiles please call me Koyuki, Naruto-kun. Naruto blushes very well Koyuki-chan. It's her turn to blush she then sighs well running a country as daunting things are peaceful, the only problem I have is the council. Naruto sighs what are they troubling you with? She sighs marriage they keep finding me solders, but they're all old people or snobs. She then smiles as well as an alliance, we could also make a political marriage to strengthen the alliance. Naruto nods you mean someone marrying me or Karen here. Karen rolls her eyes at her cousin's denseness seems she's quite taken with my cousin. Boyuki grins I was thinking along the lines of myself and you Naruto-kun. Naruto blushes you're serious. Boyuki smiles of course eh in two years we could do this. Naruto is shocked he looks at Karen who shrugs. Then she whispers to Naruto about the Uzumaki clan rule, and he blushes again. Koyuki-chan this proposal is interesting, but there is a rule for the Uzumaki clan head will myself that if the clan is almost destroyed, the head must marry several women. Boyuki smiles an interesting clause and I would be okay with that, but there is a rule on my end, it won't affect your other wives well not much, but as I am royalty I would be classed as head wife, it doesn't mean I rule over the rest or anything like that, it just means well I have a higher standing than them I guess. Naruto nods to be honest I'm only 15 so I never thought about marriage, but I would have no problems with that at all, if you're okay with sharing me, that is I know it's weird. Boyuki smiles I understand I will look forward to our eventual marriage, I will also inform the council of the alliance and the marriage. Naruto nods I understand well we must be going now Koyuki-chan I have to return to my village. Boyuki smiles and stands up she approaches Naruto and plants a kiss on his lips, I will see you soon Naruto-kun. Naruto blushes and scratches his head yes, of course, Koyuki-chan. Naruto and Karen leave the room with both Koyuki and Karen grinning and a very red face Naruto. Do month time skip. Izushi Agakur continued to prosper there now on their way to the capital before Naruto and Karen visit Sun Agakur. It only takes a day to get to the capital. Naruto and Karen have seen the capital once before as they're walking through the streets, people step away from Karen and Naruto as they're both wearing their masks Naruto of his gargoyle and Karen a vampire. As they're walking they see the daemon's assistant Hadro Ryazoki he with his escort meet both Naruto and Karen, Hadro smiles gargoyle and vampira, what brings you here? Naruto smiles I would like a meeting with the daemon it's very urgent. Hadro nods follow me and you can discuss what it is and I will then inform the daemon if I feel it's necessary. Naruto nods and he and Karen follow Hadro to a palace and the both enter Naruto gives up Fox's bane but places it on the table himself, saying the sword has a defense mechanism and only Uzumaki can touch it. Hadro nods and they then enter his private chambers. After an hour Hadro is shocked and amazed, but gladly gets refreshments for the two Uzumakis, whilst he informs the daemon. After 10 minutes Hadro comes back in and informs Naruto and Karen to follow him. After a short walk Hadro, Naruto, and Karen enter the main chambers. Naruto and Karen have never seen the daemon before they both bow to him, and his wife Naruto remembers her because of her stupid cat Tora running away from her. Naruto and Karen both take off their masks and sit down at the table provided. Naruto then retells the story of his banishment his finding and restoring Yuzushi Agakur, and finding out he's the clan head and the new Yuzukage, and he's come today to ask if he can be recognized as the Yuzukage. The daemon has of course heard rumors, but didn't believe them he smiles Naruto Yuzumaki, I have never met you, but here is in spoke highly of you, or should it be Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze, as you are the son of Kashina Yuzumaki and Minato Namikaze the Yandaime Hokage, you look a lot like your father, I met him a few times and his wife your mother. Naruto smiles well Naruto Uzumaki yes maybe add Nami Kazi when I'm a bit older. The daemon nods understandable your clan and parents had many enemies now onto Yuzushi Agakur I am happy it's been rebuilt and I officially recognize you as the Yuzukage I have to ask do you have a council yet? Naruto shakes his head, not yet we are still getting everything up and running the idea for a council has been mentioned though. The daemon nods I can provide you with some scribes to help you as I'm sure that the refugees you allowed to enter none of them were diplomats and that type of people. Naruto smiles that is correct my lord daemon, I have a few Jmnin and Chknin the academy has been rebuilt, but we only have one qualified teacher a former Chknin of Kurigakur. The daemon nods what about another school for non-ninjas. Perrin steps forward lord daemon we are in the process of building it now, but it's taking time so far it's not too urgent as we don't have that many kids of age to go to the school that doesn't want to be ninjas most are toddlers. The daemon nods understood how are you for finances Naruto. Naruto looks at Karen who speaks again we have some funding, but not much we have recently signed an alliance with the land of snow, and the land of waves are our allies we have helped them out, plus there is our money from being hunter nins. 
Padro whispers in his ear, and the Damum nods I remember a scroll reaching my desk the alliance is okay, but from now on it would be wise to contact me before making any alliances. Naruto nods my humblest apologies Lord Damum. we were caught unprepared for the alliance it came rather sudden when we helped out Princess Yuki with a problem last year. The Damum smiles I understand things like that happen is there anyone else you're interested in forming an alliance with Kanahagakur maybe, although that might be a sour spot for you I imagine. Naruto nods yes, that is true I am not happy with Konoha for many reasons. The Damum nods may I ask what your grievances are other than the banishment. Naruto nods years ago when I found Yuzushi Agakur I found a hidden temple only Yuzumaki could enter, and I was taught by an Yuzumaki elder a hologram sorry, and he informed me that when Yuzushi Agakur was under attack and sent multiple letters to Konoha for assistance. And as you know they received no help, and as such Yuzushi Agakur was destroyed my clan was almost wiped out, I was lucky to find my cousin Karen here. The Damum nods that as strange Hiruzen would have sent assistance, or was your father Hokage, then I can't remember still they would have helped if they knew. Naruto nods yes, maybe I would like to form an alliance with Sunagakur my sources are that my friend Gara is the new Hokage. The Damum nods indeed he is and an alliance is accepted will you be visiting personally. Naruto nods hi, Lord Daimyo I was planning on visiting them after coming here. The Damum smiles understood I know where Yuzushi Agakur is I can send some scribes and teachers there we have some former ninjas here. Naruto smiles that would be perfect Lord Damum I would be there to greet them, but with Sun Agakur I am unable to, but you can speak to Yukio Nakazawa, he is a Jmin, and is in charge whilst I'm gone. The Damum nods they will be there within the day. Naruto nods thank you, Lord Damum I never expected this help. The Damum smiles is there anything else? Perrin nudges Naruto and whispers to him, and he nods I'm not sure if this is relevant, but along with the alliance with the Land of Snow, a political marriage has been set up between me and Princess Yuki to take place when I turn 16. The Damum nods do you know about the restoration law? Naruto nods I have Lord Damum, and she has been informed also and is okay with it. The Damum nods very well I congratulate you on becoming the Azuka Gay and your upcoming marriage to the Damum of the Land of Snow. Naruto blushes thank you, Lord Damum. Padro smiles Lord Naruto there is someone in the capital who would very much like to meet you. Naruto nods and who may this be Hadro. Padro smiles I will take you to him as soon as this meeting is done. The Damum smiles it has been concluded Hadro he turns to Naruto good day to you Yuzuka gay Naruto Yuzumaki and your cousin Karen Yuzumaki. The both bow and get let out by Hadro as soon as they do they see a man he's male standing 6-1 swordsman build. He looks in his late 40s. Hadro escorts Naruto and Karen to the man Gale you came. The moment Gale sees Naruto he gets on one knee Naruto Yuzumaki, my name is Gale Yuzumaki I am the last of the Izuka Gay personal guard. I was on a mission for the Hokage under an assumed name of Kazuki when you was banished. I have been searching for you for years it's fortunate our paths cross today my weapons is the Banrak. I have watched over you from the shadows as much as I could, at the request of your mum who was the last heiress of the Yuzumaki clan, and I pledge my loyalty to her until death, I now pledge my loyalty to you Yuzuka Gay. Naruto is shocked another Yuzumaki. Bail nods yes and who is your companion, Lord Kage. Naruto smiles this is Karen Yuzumaki, my cousin, her mum was my mother's sister. Bail nods understood then you both will be guarded I ask that I join you on your travels. Naruto nods very well Gale stand we are heading to Sunagakur to form an alliance. Bail nods understood have you got all the supplies you will need. Perrin nods yes Gale we do. Naruto nods then let's go visit Gara. Bail looks shocked you know the Kazika Gay. Naruto nods our paths crossed in the Chknin exams. Bail nods we should be going, my lord. Naruto nods then let's go. The trio of Naruto, Karen and Gaylor as most people know them as the gargoyle of the darkness, Bane and Vampira walking through the desert on their way to Suna, it's been a day and a half since they left the capital, Gale used money to get places for his lord and his cousin, saying an Yuzuka Gay should not live outdoors. They're a few miles away from Sunagakur Karen looks at Naruto so what Suna like Naruto. Naruto turns to her it's a nice place not as bright as Yuzushi Agakur or Konoha, but it's still a nice place they don't have much water though so having plants and stuff is pointless, not much grows there. Perrin nods so they can't grow food and stuff that's not good, so they have to rely on outside help. Bail nods since the invasion some people ended relations with Sun Agakur, even though they were tricked by Orochimaru with us allying with them we can help, and I'm sure if you speak to your friend the mayor of the Land of Waves, they could ally with them also just a suggestion though. Naruto smiles that's a great idea Gale we will visit them when we return. Bail nods thank you, my lord, may I ask how long we plan to stay here. Naruto smirks not long a few days no longer. Bail nods understood. They arrive at the gates a few hours later the guards see three people arriving at the gates and are weary. One of the guards steps forward halt gargoyle, bane, and vampira, what are you here for a bounty? 
Bale, Bane, steps forward, I would be careful what you say to the Izuka Gay, unless you want to lose your head. Naruto sighs calm down Gale, we are here to see the Kazika Gay, Gara I'm an old friend, but would like to keep my mask on until I speak to him. The guard nods oh okay Lord Yuzuka Gay we were not notified of anyone visiting. Naruto smiles it's quite alright. The guard nods follow me Lord Yuzuka Gay. Naruto nods let on. The guard leads Naruto, Karen and Gale to the Kazika Gay's office. Meanwhile, in the said offices Gara, Tamari and Kankarm, all talking when there is a knock at the door. Gara tells them to enter Zich, Nin steps inside sorry to bother you Lord Kazika Gay, but I have the gargoyle of the darkness, Vampire and Bane here to see you the one known as gargoyle, says he's the Yuzuka Gay. Gara is confused as he's not heard of that title before, but he allows them to enter. The Chiknin nods and leaves the room, and shortly after three people all wearing black with masks on one is obviously a woman the others wield giant swords. Kankram is on edge Tamari is just staring at the gargoyle checking out his body. Naruto notices and smirks as does Karen. Naruto, Karen, and Gail all take off their masks, then Naruto chuckles shame on you Tamari checking me out. All three siblings look at Naruto in shock they all say Naruto at the same time. Naruto smiles, how's it going guys, told you I'd be back, allow me to introduce you Karen Yuzumaki my cousin and Gail Yuzumaki my personal guard, well the Izuka gay personal guard which is me. Ara nods it's good to see you it's been years. Naruto scratches his head yes, sorry about that I meant to visit, but with getting Yuzushi Agaka rebuilt and forming an alliance with the land of snow and the land of waves I've been busy. Damari smiles so you found something then. Naruto nods I did it's good to see you all, and Gara the Kazika Gay aren't we moving up in pedigree matching me it seems. Gara nods it seems so, it's great to see you, but is this just a social visit? Naruto smiles of course not, although it's good to see you have you forgot what I said about an alliance with Izushi Agakur, I have come to form one with you as one Kage to another. Gara smiles that is great news as well as your other alliances, we would be glad to form an alliance with you. Gara looks at Tamari who hasn't stopped staring at Naruto since he arrived, and smirks, it seems her crush on Naruto is still there, I wonder if we could do a political marriage, also that is if Naruto agrees also. He turns back to Naruto I will have to summon a council meeting, and you can speak to the council about your request. Naruto nods that sounds fine. Gara nods and summons Mitsuri when she arrives he looks at her Mitsuri summon a council meeting immediately. She nods right away Lord Kazikage. She leaves the room. Naruto smiles so what's it like being Kazika gay? Gara sighs paperwork endless paperwork I'm sure you know about that. Naruto smirks actually no, even though I'm the Izuka gay I haven't got around to actually doing that we're still building plus me and paperwork have made an agreement they stay out of my way and I don't burn their asses, plus I have clones to do paperwork, that's the great thing about shadow clones, they have a special ability that they learn and I receive all their memories makes me awesome I know. Damari giggles at that, and Kankram and Karen chuckle whilst Gara sighs, I wish we had a clone that could do that. Bale whispers in Naruto's ear and Naruto smiles, as a show of good faith many years ago when Yuzushi Agakur and Kanahagakur signed an alliance some jutsus were traded, we could tell you the secret of shadow clones, it's a forbidden jutsu in Kanahagakur, I'd advise you to make it the same only yourself learn it and the people who you trust the most, but I'd advise you to be careful when dispelling. Them it will give you a massive headache, so dispelling them in groups of two would be advisable. Gara nods understood. Just then there's a knock at the door, and Mitsuri enters they are ready for you Lord Kazika Gay. Gara nods thank you Mitsuri. She blushes and leaves and Naruto smirks seems you've got an admirer Gara. Gara looks confused who. Naruto looks at Tamari who just smirks and shrugs he turns back to Gara Mitsuri Gara. Gara nods oh, well we shouldn't keep the council waiting. A few minutes Gara, Tamari, and Kankram are in the council room. Baki looks at Gara why have we been requested Lord Kazika Gay? Gara nods we have a chance to form an alliance today, and we have their Kage here and now I will call him. He turns around you can come in now. Naruto, Karen, and Gail wearing their masks enter the council is immediately shocked, then Naruto and Karen sit down with Gail standing beside them both. Naruto, Karen, and Gail all take off their masks, and Baki is shocked Naruto it's been a while. Naruto smiles hey, Baki it has indeed. Baki nods so are you the Kage, of what village, I see no Kanahagakur headband. Naruto smiles that's because I am the Izuka Gay of Yuzushi Agakur. Baki is surprised so you found something then. Naruto nods yes, Yuzushi Agakur has been rebuilt the women beside me is Karen Yuzumaki my cousin, and behind me is Gale Yuzumaki, the last royal guard to the Izuka Gay, although Gale will most likely train more. Baki nods we heard rumors about a village being built. Naruto grins yes we have allied ourselves with the land of waves and the land of snow, and am here to ally with yourselves also that is if you're interested. 
Baki and the council start talking whilst Naruto and the others sit there Naruto notices Tamari and smiles at her, and she blushes and smiles back he thinks it's cute but not like her, but oh well. Baki and the council have finished and Baki speaks again as he knows Naruto, the council agrees to your proposal, we have a suggestion to strengthen the alliance if you're interested. Naruto smirks go ahead. Baki smiles a political marriage. Naruto nods I'm listening. Baki looks at Gara who nods he then turns back to Naruto, we propose a match between you and Tamari Sabaku. Naruto nods I suspected as much I have to inform you about a restoration law that the Uzumaki have in case of near destruction well it's the clan restoration act that Kanahagakur have adapted so, as well as being the Izukage I am also the clan heirs for the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans, and as such, I have to find multiple wives unfortunately you are not the first to propose an alliance and Marriage Koyuki Kazuhana the Daimum of the Land of Snow also wants to marry me, there is a stipulation to that as she is royalty she will technically be the head wife, but only in title, she can't boss anyone around as such. Baki and everyone else is shocked not only is he the Naruto the Izukage, he's also the clan heirs for the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans, but also set to marry Koyuki Kazuhana, the Daimum of the Land of Snow. Baki looks at Gara for what to do, and he looks at Tamari Tamari what do you think? She shrugs then smirks of course, I would have preferred Naruto, all to myself but, the clan restoration act is a good idea to bring back the clans, so if he is okay, I will still like to marry him. Naruto blushes I accept if you're sure though. She nods I do. Naruto grins then I look forward to the time when we get married. She grins me too. Gara nods well that's great news were you serious about that offer of jutsu trading. Naruto nods oh yes we did it with Kanahagakur, it's also a sign of respect for our villages we can help with barriers around the village. Baki nods we could trade some wind jutsus as you are a wind user Yuzukage. Naruto nods sounds good we can also help with supplies we know it's hard to plant food, so with us on an island we can assist you. Baki nods we thank you for your generosity Lord Yuzukage. Naruto brushes it off not a problem we are only too happy to help we know it's been tough since the invasion a few years back, if you are interested you might try and form a deal with the land of waves also, but it's just a suggestion though. Baki nods yes, it has so we thank you again we would like to celebrate our alliance, if that is okay the people of Suna haven't had much to be happy about in the last few years. Naruto smiles that is fine. Baki nods great news. Gara nods I think that is it for now, council dismissed. Gara let Naruto, Karen, and Gale stayed in the Sabaku compound whilst they stayed in Sunagakur there was a week of celebrating. Tamari even took Naruto out of a date which surprised Naruto, but he enjoyed the date they shared a loving kiss at the end. At the end of the week Naruto, Karen, and Gale started to leave Naruto, and Tamari shared another kiss before the group left, he said she could visit Yuzushi Agakur if she wanted, and she agreed as did Gara and Kankerm. It's now been a few days since they left Sunagakur. Karen has been teasing her cousin about his relationship with Tamari, their little makeout sessions when they thought nobody was watching, with Naruto forgetting Karen was a censor type, so she always knew where he was. Bale was happy the happiest he's been since Naruto's banishment, he has now found Naruto for many years, he beat himself up for losing Naruto and begging Lady Kashina's forgiveness, but now he's reunited with his lord and will always protect him. Karen grins so I bet you can't wait to see and kiss Tamari again. Naruto blushes I don't know what you're talking about Karen. She grins are you forgetting I'm a censor type I always knew where you were or who you were with. Naruto groans I hate you. She grins then she senses someone there is someone up ahead. Bale looks at them friend or foe. Perrin shrugs not sure it's only one person. Naruto nods let's see who this is shall we. Bale nods this is your land whoever this person is they're trespassing. Naruto nods be on guard then. They both nod Gale pulls out Banrick Naruto pulls out Fox's Bane, and Karen pulls out her two daggers, she's not named them yet, they then approach the mystery person they see a red-headed woman at some ruins Gale speaks up who are you, and what are you doing here, these lands are not for scavengers state your business. The woman looks at the small group and gulp sorry my name is Hinoka Yuzumaki I'm an archaeologist. Naruto nods you're in Yuzumaki interesting seems we found another clan member. Hinoka looks up are you hunting Yuzumakis I won't go down without a fight. Naruto smirks not to sound arrogant, but we could easily kill you, but we are not hunting Yuzumaki, we are all Yuzumaki. Anoka is shocked you are, wait you have blonde hair. Naruto nods taken after my father, I am Naruto Yuzumaki, to the left is my cousin Karen Yuzumaki, and to my right Gale Yuzumaki my personal guard. Anoka looks confused why would you need a personal guard. Bale speaks he is the Yuzukage that is why. Anoka is shocked seriously, but Yuzushi Agakur was destroyed. Naruto nods it was but it's been rebuilt as in Yuzumaki you're welcome to see it and live there if you so wish. Anoka nods see it like that I'm more of a traveling archaeologist my lord Yuzukage. Naruto smiles well let's go then you can check out the ruins later. 
Anoka grabs her things and catches up to Naruto, Karen, and Gale. She starts talking to Karen whilst Naruto is talking to Gale. A few hours later they reach as Ushiagakure Yukio greets them he sees the man besides Naruto and the other women he smiles, welcome back Lord Yuzukage, can we call you that now? Naruto nods yes, Yukio, we have much to discuss how are the scribes they arrive okay. Yukio nods they did Lord may I ask who these two new companions are. Naruto nods Hinoka Yuzumaki and Gale Yuzumaki, Gale is the last of the personal guard of the Yuzukage Hinoka is an archaeologist. Yukio nods I see how did the alliance go with Sunagakur. Naruto smiles it went well we are now allied with them now. Yukio nods that is good lord Yuzukage come you must be tired. Chapter end. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comment section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.